Okay, well this is a solar, well a light powered solar light operator wind chime that uh, my wife received for her birthday a little bit ago. And uh, she wants to hang this thing in the house and just look at the hummingbirds because each uh, hummingbird does have an LED light on the inside of it and it does change colors. You can see some of them sitting there changing. But she wants to use this in the house where there's effectively no solar power light, obviously. So let me turn on the big lights. Uh, word of warning, light is coming on. Okay, so there are all the lights that are on. Let's get some of this junk out of the way here. Clip leads, whatever. Yes, okay. So as you can see, it's got two uh, little solar panels. And I did go ahead and uh, put tape over them because what happens is if there's enough ambient light, it'll actually turn off the uh, solar operated hummingbirds and she wants to enjoy those during the day. So what I plan to do is I'm going to install a little micro USB jack right here and we can plug a standard cell phone micro USB charger into it and keep this thing active all the time so I don't have to go burning through batteries over and over. So the first thing I need to do is find out how much current does this thing actually need to operate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, <coughs> excuse me, open this up. And so I, I do have uh, rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries that I'm using. I buy quite a few of them at a time. And as you can see, there is the internal circuitry. Not much to it. They just soldered everything together right there. And so there is the nickel metal hydride. And that's when I purchased it in uh, December of 2020. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one in the charger. And the charger says it's at 1.15 volts right now. And so basically, I want to get out an external power supply. And just for reference, I'm going to set this to about one and a half volts. Let's go ahead and get an actual voltmeter out here so we can monitor the voltage fairly accurately. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Uh, 2.5, a little high. So basically, I want to put it at about one and a half volts. That's close enough, 1.502 volts. Now I'm going to clip this on to the Hummingbird light assembly, and I want to measure the current and see what is the average current that this thing needs to operate. Average. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect the negative to the spring. And I'll have to grab a couple of clip leads one moment. And I'm going to put this in the milliamp mode here. And we'll put it on DC milliamps. Hopefully you can see that there. Because I'm connecting the leads here. I get the right leads connected up here. And so my power supply is set for 1.5 volts. And it looks like it draws about 34 milliamps. So what I'm going to do is put this on min max. And I want to put it on average because as these things change colors, it could possibly draw more or less milliamps, more or less current. Uh, let's just go ahead. We have it on average. We'll put it on max. So 33 milliamps max at this point. And obviously I have the leads reversed because it's showing negative right there. So it looks like 34 milliamps is the max current we draw and we average about 33.5 milliamps. We'll let this thing cook for a few minutes. Let me shut off the bright video lights so you can see the individual colors of the hummingbirds if it'll stay focused. 
Let's go ahead and put that into the manual focus mode. Hopefully things are still in view there. Let it cycle through the colors because different colors draw a different current, obviously. So yeah, about 34, 35 milliamps. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this basically um, micro USB jack and I just want to figure out, I want to just put a, I'll put a battery in this unit and I want to put a dropping resistor so that it charges basically the battery at just a couple of extra milliamps and powers this unit with the rest. So probably about 40 milliamps is what I'm going to be looking at for a total uh, current draw into this unit. So we'll put about five milliamps extra back into the battery. That way, if the power were to go off, this thing will stay lit for, well, actually it stays lit for a couple of days with one nickel metal hydride battery in it. And I don't think five milliamps going into that nickel metal hydride battery is going to overcharge it. Maybe after 10 or 15 years, it'll cause some damage, but you know, I'm not worried about a, what, two or $3 battery at this point. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of calculation, figure out, what the uh, dropping voltage is from five to one and a half volts, because these things, even though they're 1.25 volts when they're fully charged, they're pretty close to one and a half volts, nickel metal hydride that is. And we'll figure out what value resistor we need to put into this thing. And uh, yeah, plug it into the wall, keep it on all the time. Happy wife, happy life. Okay, so according to the Ohm's law calculator, if I have a voltage drop of three and a half volts and a current of 40 milliamps, I need to find a resistor of 87 and a half ohms to basically drop that voltage. So that way it will overcharge the nickel metal hydride battery just ever so slightly. I don't think that's gonna be a problem with that, but let me see what I can come up with. One moment. Well, I didn't come up with any uh, 87 ohm resistors, but I did find a 82, which measures actually 80 ohms. And so with the three and a half volt drop with 80 ohms, it'll dissipate 43 milliamps, basically. And so it's going to charge that battery at approximately 10 milliamps more than necessary. But it's a 2000 milliamp hour battery, so I'm not seeing a problem with that over the long run. Yeah, it's going to keep it topped off, but... You know, like I said, batteries are freaking cheap and I really don't care at this point, just as long as the wife is happy with her little hummingbird wind chime. Okay, so let's go ahead and wire this thing in. I'm just gonna hot glue it basically to the outside of this unit so that I can plug a USB in as it hangs from the ceiling and we'll go from there. And so what just happened? So, um, 29 milliamps minimum. Oh, I think the light probably as the light shines in here, it, it makes a change if I had to guess. I don't know if I can force that. Nah, it's fine. Okay, let's go ahead and get this thing wired up and ready to go. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is just take this little USB micro USB connector and I'm just going to hot glue it onto the case right there. And then I'll probably just go ahead and drill a hole next to it, like right in this area here. That way I can run the wires up and through there. Because when this was meant for outside use, it has basically the ceiling surface right here. So I really wanna get it on this side so I can just attach it once it's in inside here. We'll just add that uh, 80, 80, ohm resistor and then uh, things should be good at that point so I'm just going to go ahead and I've got my hot glue gun warming up right now let's get these guys kind of out of the way and I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, power supply right in between these two holes right there that it hangs by so it'll be right here and then it can actually go up and hang as well from the ceiling. So here is the little uh, micro USB jack. I've ordered like 10 or 20 of these things. So basically uh, ground on the left and V bus 
on the right, which will give us the five volt supply that we need for this thing to operate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a drop of hot glue and just glue it basically in that position right there. And as you can see, if I line this up, it is basically lined up with the flat part of the solar panel. And I think that's gonna work fine. All right, here we go. Let's see if this is going to work out. Is the hot glue actually warmed up? Yes, I believe it is, because it is spewing everywhere on the workbench. So just a little droplet of hot glue right there. And then we've only got a few seconds to arrange this thing exactly where I want it. And it's sticking to me, obviously. Try to get the stringers off of there. It's the side effect of using hot glue. And so um, next, I wanna go ahead and just drill a small hole. Like I said, I don't wanna drill it. I don't really wanna drill it down below because it has like that rain guard thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fire a little hole right there to run the wires through. Hard to see because of the washed out exposure, but there is the hole. And I do have uh, some little twisted pair of wires. Hopefully they will fit through there just fine. And yes, they do. Okay, let me go ahead and tin those. Yeah, strip them back, tin them, and get them ready to go. One moment. Okay, there it is plugged in and it should be charging just slightly more than the birds are using. So this should last many, many years. Once again, happy wife, happy life. Thanks for watching. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.